If you don't hold it, you don't own it. I'm curious to get your thoughts. When you saw this news, what you were thinking, I mean, do you believe the news? And two, before we actually talk about the system, why do you think they announced it? Like if it's supposed to be a, co a competitor to the dollar, if they're planning something, um, why announce it? Well, you know, it's kind of interesting because yes, when I heard that news, immediately went to my mind was they can't do it till they burn off the debt. So unless they are creating with, with what backing. So I of course did some digging cause that's what I'm about. And, yes. uh, and this announcement was made from the Russian embassy, I think it was in Kenya, but it was somewhere in, yes. in Africa. Yes. And Kenya. then RT picked up on it and ran it as if it was a given. Now, when I did my digging into it, what the, what the BRICS nations, what the BRICS bank is actually saying is that um, they don't have plans to back the cur any currency or certainly the BRICS currency with gold at this point, that all they're talking about is enabling all of its members to use their own local currency to transact with each other. Now, Russia has announced that they're not going to be attending this BRICS summit next month. So it's gonna be really kind of interesting with them backing out. And I understand, you know, why they did with the Ukraine war and not wanting to get the whole world involved and in, in thinking that they're gonna do it. But I, I personally, ultimately, yes. And I think a more interesting story is actually what's happening in Zimbabwe because that's where the test of a gold-backed CBDC is taking place at the moment, but um, no, I don't, I don't think they can do it. I don't think they can do it. Well, well, well and thank you for, for explaining that because one of the questions that came to mind is, okay, even if it's China and Russia, they don't have enough gold to back such a system. Don't you need a lot of gold to get that kind of system off the ground? Actually, that's like a misconception of a lot of people. Like, well, they okay. can't back a currency with gold because there's not enough gold. Well, what really matters is the price of the gold in terms of that currency. Lynette Zhang often emphasizes that the whole point of gold being a stabilizing influence is due to its rarity and broad-based use. She argues that you don't need a tremendous amount of gold to back a currency. It just depends on how it's valued in terms of that currency. According to her, we will see gold backing again because governments will have to do it to gain the confidence of the population to use the currency. This is why she finds what's happening in Zimbabwe so interesting. They're in the test phase right now to see the acceptance of a gold-backed CBDC. However, she notes that, at this point, she has not found any documentation stating that the CBDC will actually be convertible into gold. She questions how you can know the gold is there until a currency is convertible, comparing it to a crapshoot. She finds it interesting to see how this will be accepted and is certain every central bank is watching closely. To this point, Lynette is glad to see a focus on this issue and giving it proper credence because others might say, since when was Zimbabwe a market mover? even if they're successful. Think about when they tested bank bail-ins. Where did they test it? In Cyprus. These tests always take place in areas where people think, oh, that's over there, that can't happen here. So yes, she gives a lot of credence to it, especially with the global trend of central banks repatriating or bringing their gold home. That uh -huh. is more huge than anybody realizes for that's right. Right? I mean, for a number of reasons, but um, this is really picking up steam. So what are these central banks thinking? Why are they no longer wanting to hold it, like, say, at the Bank of England, where they use it as collateral and then trade, right? What, what are central banks doing trading anyway? It's, it's about market manipulation. Which makes you think, Lynette, because you and I have been in the in the gold sector for a long time, and you remember when gold, Germany repatriated its gold from the U.S. and they kind of downplayed the reason why. I mean, and what year was that? 
years ago. Right. But now all the pieces, I mean, are they lining up? I mean, was that plan already in effect even back then? Yeah, but Germany is a much more advanced economy. And so they're like, they were at the forefront. But even think, I think a lot of it has to do with how the U.S. basically used the dollar system, the SWIFT system, to kick Russia out of the global financial system. Right. And everybody, every central banker was paying attention to that one as well. And so, Absolutely. you know, they know a key thing, which is if you don't hold it, you don't own it. <laughs> And, and, okay, the BRICS aside, right, Lynette, I mean, would you still argue that the U.S. dollar's best days are behind it? Because there's all these announcements, like this one right here, India signing an agreement with the UAE that would allow it to settle trade in rupees instead of dollars, boosting India, uh, India's efforts to cut transaction costs by eliminating dollar conversion. So all these countries kind of trying to leave the stranglehold of the U.S. dollar, rebelling against the U.S. dollar. I mean, at some point, it has to add up to something significant. Oh, a hundred percent. The days of the of the dollar being the world reserve currency are fast coming to a close. And that move actually didn't start even, you know, it started back in 2002 because that was when the Federal Reserve first had to buy U.S. debt which is an indication that the world was either saturated in it or they weren't really, they weren't able or wanting, wanting is probably a better word, uh, to buy the enough of the U.S. debt that we were trying to shove down everybody's throats. So yeah, there is absolutely zero doubt in my mind that the U.S. dollar is losing its position as the world reserve currency. Lynette Zhang doesn't think that a BRICS currency, China, or any smaller group of countries will take over the role of the world reserve currency. She believes the future lies with the SDR, or Special Drawing Rights, issued by the International Monetary Fund INF. In her view, the SDR stands out as a more viable option due to its unique structure and history. Unlike a single country's currency, the SDR is a basket of multiple currencies, which helps to spread risk and provides a more stable foundation for global transactions. This basket includes major world currencies like the US dollar, euro, Chinese yuan, Japanese yen, and British pound. The diversification within the SDR means it doesn't rely on the economic stability of one country, making it a more resilient option in volatile times. Lynette points out that the SDR has been in existence since 1969, giving it a long-standing history and credibility in international finance. Over the years, it has gradually accumulated importance, especially in recent times. For instance, the IMF allocated a substantial amount of SDRS to member countries a couple of years ago, significantly boosting its presence in global reserves. This allocation was part of a broader effort to provide liquidity during economic uncertainties further cementing the SDR's role in international finance. Additionally, Lynette mentions the substitution fund, which she sees as a critical mechanism in transitioning from a dollar-dominated system to one based on SDRS. The substitution fund allows for the easy conversion of dollar-denominated assets into SDR-denominated assets. This capability is vital because it offers a smooth transition for countries looking to diversify away from the U.S. dollar without causing market disruptions. In her view, this feature would establish the SDR as the largest and most liquid currency in the world, as it can pool assets from various countries and convert them into a unified reserve. Therefore, for several reasons, including its ability to encompass multiple currencies, long-standing credibility, and the ease of transition it offers, Lynette believes the SDR makes the most sense as the future global reserve currency. She sees it as a practical solution for a world moving towards a more multipolar economic system, where no single nation's currency dominates, but rather a collective of major currencies provides stability and balance.